My name is Jennifer Wall and I'm the administrator of the Adoption Centre of British Columbia. The Adoption Centre of British Columbia is a not-for-profit, fee-for-service, licensed adoption agency in the province of British Columbia. And we work with prospective adoptive parents and birth parents throughout the province who wish to consider adoption. And so when we're working with adoptive parents, in particular, we provide um, services so that they can become approved through a home study process and also receive education as required by the legislation so that they can be approved to adopt within our province. We then help them to profile themselves however appropriate in terms of the adoption plan they've chosen. We help them also with placement and then also with completing their adoption. With adoptive parents, we help them to take a look at all of the options that are available to them to determine if adoption is the best plan. And if it is, then we help them to choose a family that they feel comfortable placing their child with. We also help them to negotiate openness, which is contact that they'll have with the adopting parents after the adoption placement. We help them to identify what's important to them around the placement of their child and how they want that to unfold. And then, of course, we help them with their grief and loss after placement. For families who are wanting to adopt within our province, there are three main options. The first of them would be what we call domestic adoption, and that refers to the adoption of a child who's usually newborn or an infant. Typically, placement would happen right from the hospital in those cases. A second option would be an intercountry adoption, which would be when the child that the adopting parents wish to adopt resides and was born in a different country and is coming to British Columbia. The third option would be to adopt one of BC's waiting children. BC's waiting children are under the legal guardianship of the Ministry of Children and Family Development and they reside in foster care. These children are generally older in age and by that I mean they're typically four years of age and older. Um, they may also be part of a sibling group. BC's waiting children are different from the other children who are available for adoption and there's lots of significant differences that are actually even advantages, I believe. As I mentioned before, BC's waiting children are generally older in age, so they're usually four years of age and older and part of a sibling group often. As a result of their age and also the fact that they are in ministry foster care, typically there's more information that is known about these children than say a child coming from another country or a newborn infant. And while not everything might be known about the child, there is more information for adoptive parents to take a look at when they're considering adopting a child from BC's waiting children. Another advantage, I believe, is that there's an increased amount of support that is available for prospective adoptive parents when transitioning that child into their home, as well as after the child has been placed for adoption in their home. Another significant advantage, I believe, is that children that are adopted from BC's waiting children often still have contact with birth family relatives, and as a result of that, it's important to maintain that contact. What that means is that adopting parents can continue to learn important information um, for their child's development as that child grows in their home. To adopt one of BC's waiting children, the legal process is that after the child is placed with the adopting parents in their home, six months later the adoption is eligible to be completed. And adoptions are completed in Supreme Court in BC. Once the adoption order is granted, there's a legal relationship that's established between the adoptive child and the adoptive parents, which is the same as a birth child to a birth parent. The cost to adopt one of BC's waiting children is significantly less than adopting through the domestic program or through adopting by an intercountry route. There's a lot of services and support available in the placement of BC's waiting children. Another advantage and benefit to adopting one of these children is that you have access as an adoptive parent to a program called post-adoption assistance. And post-adoption assistance, based on the adoptive parent's financial eligibility, is available to that family until the child turns 19 years of age. This program gives adoptive parents access to funding in order to meet their child's special needs as they grow and develop. 
The idea behind the post-adoption assistance program is to remove financial barriers while recognizing that these children will have some special needs and some challenges as they grow and develop because of some of their difficult beginnings. My name is Nancy Sora and I'm the coordinator of the Special Needs Adoption Program, SNAP for short. And my role is to work directly with children who are permanent wards, who have been referred for adoption planning, to help them prepare for adoption. Our program is unique in that we're embedded right on the MCFD team, and so we work with the social workers in with a team approach to uh, find the right matches for children and to know that they're prepared well for those matches. BC's waiting children are children who are permanent wards of the ministry. Their uh, technical order that comes through is the continuing custody order, so they're in the custody of the director of the Ministry of Children and Families. So these children have come into care due to detrimental parenting in some form, maybe abuse, neglect, poverty, low capacity to parent, there may have been substance abuse issues or mental health issues. And so often the children have come in and out of care a number of times and uh, they may have developmental needs that need addressing uh, or they may have had um, uh, damage from in utero substance abuse. However, all of the children will have special needs around their attachment because their attachment has been interrupted and, and damaged. And so uh, that's something we always need to keep in mind when we're planning for these children. Assessing children in care begins with intake. Birth family is interviewed to get as much social and medical information as we can. As well, they're usually taken to medical professionals to understand where their health is at. If they're referred for adoption planning, very often they also go for psychoeducational assessments, which gives us a really clear picture of, of how they're doing. And they may go for counseling, that's another source of understanding where they're at. Uh, the school is yet another source and SNAP plays a role in that as well because we go into the home and we get to know the children in their foster home and we bring that back to the team in terms of what we we see the child's needs as. The matching process is actually quite complex. We need to understand what the needs of the child are but the family also needs to understand our children and they need to understand themselves and what their strengths will be in terms of what kinds of needs they will best be matched with. And so for them, they go to the adoption education program and that will give them a good overview of who our children are and begin to help them understand what the various issues will be in adoption. And from there, they have a home study done and in their home study process, it begins to emerge what their strengths will really be and what a best fit will be for them in terms of a match. And when a match is made, or a potential match is made, they will have access to more information about that child. And as well, the workers involved will be looking to get more information from the family to make sure it's a fit. Children are prepared for adoption through home visits. SNAP goes into the foster home to work with each individual child and we use as one of our key tools the life book. And a life book contains not only photos but details of their history, why they're in care, what kinds of things were important to their birth family, why it is they can't go back to live with their birth family. We also help them understand their feelings and support them in their grief and loss issues and help them learn some coping skills. And when it comes time for adoption planning, we also do a lot more talking about different kinds of families and adoptive families in particular and what adoption means. The transition is very important. We always have to be mindful that the children have had attachment injuries. So what's paramount in transitioning is building a healthy foundation of attachment with an adoptive family. So we do that in various stages and the total length will be different for a younger child than it would for an older child 
Generally, the older the child is, the longer the transition would be. But the stages are basically, uh, first of all, that the family would come into the foster home and they would begin to develop a relationship with the child through play and they would observe the child in their various routines of the day. And the next stage would mean that they would come and continue visiting, but they would begin to take over that care as they've seen it modeled. And the next stage after that is, of course, visitation in their own home. And usually the children are accompanied by foster family at first, and they spend longer periods of time in the adoptive home until we see that they are comfortable with that family, and then we would do placement.